This week is all about tissues. There's a whole chapter on tissues in your book. We're going to be covering um, a lot of it in this week. Ner the details on nervous and muscle tissue, I'll come back to in a later lecture in a future week. So let's start with introduction to tissues. Here we go. First, I want to put this in context with the levels of organization that we've talked about before. How do tissues fit in? So this is a little bit of review. So as you know, molecules are the smallest level of organization. Atoms are small, smaller than that. You could add in atoms if you like to think about those as well. Um, atoms such as sodium, Na plus, and potassium, which is K plus, are important. Molecules are things like NaCl, so sodium combined with chloride, glucose, proteins, really important one, phospholipids, etc. Molecules are enclosed in cells and also outside of cells. So the next level is going to be cells. Cell is the smallest unit of life. So the smallest thing that can be alive. So it's going to be a plasma membrane with a bunch of molecules inside at the most general level. Some of those molecules are going to be genetic material. So cells are individual units of life that then come together in multicellular organisms and work together. And the next thing they form is tissues. So tissues are groups of cells and those cells can be either one cell type or more than one cell type that have related functions. We'll see examples of this. And those cells work together to do something. Um, they're related in terms of what they're going to do. Tissues also have extracellular material as well. So other proteins or liquids that are a part of them. And that's really variable as well, depending on what tissue type we're talking about. So epithelial and connective are the two I will focus on this week. They're very different in this regard. Um, but overall, groups of cells that are gonna work together. Those tissues, of course, are going to come together um, to form organs. Organs are always more than one tissue type. And organs are going to do something, such as pump blood, circulate blood, digest food, probably anamsorb food, um, produce urine, uh, etc. These organs work together to be an organ system. And this is how we actually, a single organ can't actually, you would pump blood. Sure, the heart pumps blood. It's not going to really matter for the organism unless it also has blood vessels. So the heart, along with the um, blood vessels, are the cardiovascular or circulatory system. Okay, so tissues. Erase this. Tissues are, again, um, groups of cells, along with often extracellular matrix, extracellular material, that work to do something. So they do have functions associated with them. These are the four main tissue types. So I'm going to briefly talk about the functions of all four, and then we'll be focusing on epithelial and connective for now. So again, groups of similar cells, so not always with one cell type, but similar cells, along with their products that function as a unit. So this would be the unit of function could be um, nervous tissue. They all, this tissue is designed to carry out electrical signals that is for internal communication. So the components of nervous tissue are the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. And this is what the histology um, which is the microscopic anatomy of the, that tissue looks like. There are neurons and other cell types here that help to allow this tissue to function, to carry, to um, have electrical signals occur. Muscle tissue, um, there's three different types here. There, this is skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. All muscle tissue contracts. This is important because it allows for movement either movement of your whole body or movement of something in your body. So blood flow, food through your digestive tract, etc. So muscle tissue contracts. Those cells are specialized to be able to contract. The proteins they make um, 
allow for contraction and a lot of ATP generation as well. So this relates to cell specialization we talked about last week. All of these tissues are going to have different specialized cells in them. Epithelial, um, a little bit broader functions. We'll get into this more in a separate lecture, but it is always on the outside of the body. Outside can either mean literally skin, but also internal outsides. So digestive tract, trachea, respiratory tract that have lumens, that's actually considered, um, this, these hollow organs are considered outside of the body and epithelial lines all of those. It also makes glands and again, skin surface is one of those, um, the out, outside lining. Here's a picture of one example of epithelial tissue. This would be the intestinal lining with microvilli here. They're fairly diverse, we'll come back to those. Lastly, we have connective. Connective are the broadest type of tissue. They, are, they support, and they connect and protect. So bones, tendons, fat, those are all pretty different things already. Blood is connective tissue. It's a very diverse group. Um, and these all have a larger amount of extracellular material. So there's the cells and areolar is actually an example here that has a whole lot of extracellular stuff. Um, so we'll get into lots of examples of those. So those are the four broad categories. I do want you to know all four of those. And then um, nervous and muscle will come back to the unique properties of them that actually are both electrically excitable when we, when we get to them. So we're gonna be looking at tissue histology. Histology is the microscopic anatomy of tissues. We're doing this in lab and we'll see lots of pictures in lecture as well. So I want to spend some time um, looking at how we cut sections of tissue or organs to look at this histology. This is a nice image from your book that relates to those sections of the body we talked about, right? Horizontal or cross section, frontal or coronal this way, and then sagittal. But we've actually got another term here, and that's because these sections are related to the way that the organ or tissue is oriented, which might not be the same as anatomical position. So this bone could be either an arm bone or a leg bone. My arm just disappeared. Um, a cross section is still across the long axis, axis of that bone, just like it is of your body. So that is kind of what, um, pretty similar, but it could be something that's, that's a different orientation. Um, so a cross section it, of a bone is going to look like a circle. A longitudinal section is more similar to either a sagittal or a frontal section. Doesn't really matter which for a bone, right? Because it's the same. You don't really know when you get this, these sections right here, which way, it doesn't matter. Sagittal and frontal look the same for an, a um, specimen like this. So longitudinal or LS, you'll see on the slides that we use, will be um, what you call these sections. So I want you first, when you look at a slide, to look and see, can I figure out, okay, the slide says it's esophagus. How do they cut this esophagus? Can I tell if it's a cross section or a longitudinal section? You should be able to tell. And that's gonna help you find the cells you wanna find, that I want you to find, and that you wanna find, because you wanna learn. Oblique sections are kind of sideways. Um, we won't see this much unless it's kind of by accident. So that's one thing about these slides is, you know, these histology slides are prepared by people um, and they're not always perfect. So that's something to remember when you're looking at histology is that sometimes there's gonna be something that's a little bit off. Um, this is a real organ. So you might get a little bit of different shapes, right? You can imagine someone accidentally cutting a little bit obliquely by accident. So we might see that in lab. So these are two examples of these different cuts. These are little tubes that are in the kidneys kidney tubules, just imagine little tubes, right? If you cut those tubes longitudinally, they would make long tubes like this. If you cut them cross section, these are each tube here. So part of this is going to be trying to visualize from your slide going from that two-dimensional back to three-dimensional. 
one more thing I want to say about histology is these are stained, right? So this picture right here is cut with a small little machine of their microtome or a cryostat that cuts in little sections. And then there is, um, it's stained so that different things show up differently. There are different stains then that make things look different. We're going to often see the stain in this class where it's, it's pink in the background and then the nuclei are going to stain purple. That's really useful to know. Okay, last thing for introductory here. Um, what I want you to do is try to do that, practice that visualization. So if you were to cut an egg at these five places, what would that look like? Try to pause and visualize that. Here it is. So from, this is what you're going to get on a microscope slide. It's one of these pictures. How does that relate to back to the organism is what I'm asking you to think about. Two more examples. This is a macaroni noodle. If you cut it this way, three times here, it's going to look different on those three different sections. It's going to look like this at the top, like this in the middle, like this at the bottom. And then that is going to help you know where you are in the organ you're looking at. One kind of practical example, this is actually something that we'll see. So if you have this tube here, could be intestine, for example. Um, if you cut along this, kidney tubules will kind of be similar. Um, someone cuts this when they're processing this tissue. It might look like this. What the heck? That's not a tube. Well, yeah, it is, because this is a real organism. That tube doesn't go perfectly straight, and they can't cut perfectly. So it might look like this. So important just to remember that when you're looking at histology slides, you have to try to think about what you're looking at in the real organism.